Father, we're longing for We are your children born from God We believe you're coming back for us So Jesus, while we wait for you Lord, we will tell the world the truth That you came to save that you're never coming back Jesus we know better than that Holy Spirit will be with us till the end Sticking closer than a brother or a friend so Jesus while we wait for you Lord we will tell the world And it's not too late to be in your grace Jesus, while we wait for you Lord, we will tell the world the truth That you came to say And it's not too late to is humanity's intentional evolution through science and through technology. That is from an 1883 dictionary definition of transhumanism. So they knew back then. <laughs> On these two, I'm trying to say brief videos, but they won't be. I have to divide it into two parts because there's so much information about transhumanism today. The first part will be a brief history in which I will be including um, background information, Darwinism, it all adds up. It's not anything new, nothing new under the sun. And also discussing a lot of today's technology, maybe some things you never knew about. Part two will be the extraterrestrial link, because there is a link, and messages that we've been receiving. And then, of course, we're going to end with what sayeth the scripture, because we need to see what God is actually saying about this phenomena. Okay? Transhumanism, history. It goes back to Darwin, but of course Darwin is only the most popular proponent of his theory of evolution. Be prior to him there was Charles Lyell and many others who became enamored with the fact that what can life be without God? What if there's no God? And that's the key to all this. People acting as if there is no God and what we can get away with if we don't believe in God. So Charles Darwin penned some books, and of course everybody knows famous theory of evolution, which never became a fact. It's still theory. Um, man's vain imagination, like I said, what if there is no God? Let's get rid of God and see how, if we can recreate life, we can scientifically say how life came about. So the increase in science and technology over, let's say, the last hundred years, 
It's astonishing. It's off the charts. Man had horse-drawn carts, farming, very primitive uh, equipment, non-electronics for many, many centuries. And all of a sudden, electricity, computerization, all this technology came and built upon each other and became more and more advanced. So the barrier of playing God used to be something that would prevent people from going a little bit too far with technology. But nowadays, the fear of God is all but gone. People can play God because they say, proverbially, you know, that lightning strike is not hitting me when I do these things. And I know a lot of people who have said that. Look, I can get away with this. I'm not bitten hit by lightning. I can yell at the sky and say, God, I don't believe in you and I won't get hit by lightning. Well, of course, because that's not how God acts. If you are familiar with how God acts and he's long-suffering and merciful toward us, and we'll be judged after we die, not here in this life. If you knew that, you wouldn't do that. Human experimentation wasn't done back in the year, decades ago um, and even centuries ago because of the fear of God. You don't mess with his creation. But fast forward to today's godless society. Um, you can even go as far back as World War II, Hitler, Mengele. They experimented on people and their goal was to improve humans. Human 2.0, if you've heard that. They wanted to make an Aryan race, which a, a, a race of super soldiers. And that's probably always been the goal of mankind, to improve, to live longer, to be stronger. So let's just talk a little bit about just a couple of examples. It's very difficult to keep this in a nutshell, but I'm going to do my best. The first person is Rudolf Steiner. He lived about 100 years ago. And I'm going to put on the screen his quotations, and I'll read them as well. In the future, the soul will be eliminated by medicine. On the pretense of health, there will be a vaccine Sensor. whereby the human organism will be treated with, possibly directly at birth, so that the human being cannot develop the awareness of soul and spirit. Materialistic doctors will be entrusted with the task of removing the soul from humanity. Like today, people are vaccinated Sensor. against specific diseases, so in the future, children will be Sensor. vaccinated with a substance that will immunize against the madness of spiritual life. With such a vaccine, beep, beep. you can get the etheric body to detach from the physical body, and when it's detached, the relationship between soul and the universe becomes unstable, and man becomes an automaton or a zombie, because the physical body of man must be polished on this earth by will and spiritual effort. So the vaccine becomes a kind of force that man can no longer get rid of materialistic feeling. Now, this is quotations from this man, R. Steiner. He wrote books called An Outline of Occult Science. He wrote a book called Christ and the Human Soul. Doesn't that sound religious? But it's actually not. It's a, four lectures in which he explores the human soul and the potential for few, further development. New methods of meditation, reincarnation, karma, evolution, all of that kind of stuff. So it's not really a Christian religious book at all. Okay, would you like to receive a Sensor. vaccine from this man? Or would you like to receive a vaccine Sensor from again. this man? Being Bill Gates? Look where these information is coming from and, and what these scientists and these famous people, what their worldviews and teachings are coming from before you accept any kind of medication or any vaccination beep, beep, from these beep. people. So still trying to be brief with the history, there have been basically four industrial revolutions over these centuries of, ma of mankind. Like I said, the cart, the horses, the farmers, kind of, you know, village life there. You have a little bakery over here that you know, grinds the grains and stuff like that. And then as we advanced, we went to the 18th century, which is 1700s, and we had steam power. We had water power through mills. We have a lot of them where we live here in New England. So it's about like 1700 to the 1860s. And in the 1860s is when trains came into power and were invented and they were run on steam, steam engines. So that was like the big deal. The second industrial revolution was electricity. 
Um, think of automobiles. Ford invented the car, the um, assembly line. That's about 1863 to 1947. Then came the third industrial revolution, which was the digital age. So from about 1970 to current ages. We have computers, robotics. There's a lot more robotics and things that we don't even know about when they manufacture stuff. A robot doesn't necessarily look like a humanoid. It can just be like an arm that puts things into place or paints things. So the fourth industrial revolution is today. It's the internet. It's worldwide communication. AI, which is um, what does AI mean? Inte artificial intelligence? What, let me tell you, does not have a sense of humor. <laughs> it doesn't get jokes. Um, gene editing on human beings. So this is, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. So this man over here, Klaus Schwab, in 2015, wrote a book called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. He called something today the Great Reset. Okay, That is with gene editing and changing human beings, human 2.0. This is scary territory to be in. This used to be forbidden territory, but now since most don't believe in God, they think it's okay to do because he's not striking them down with lightning. So globalists, transhumanists, Luciferians, they've been around for decades, maybe centuries, and they're all have in common working toward this great reset. There's many, many names that this is called, but if you step back and zoom out and look at all these beliefs around the world, they're all coming to a point of trying to live longer, trying to add things onto the human genome so that we can be superhuman, super soldiers, things like that. So um, there's a nice resource, if you're interested in this, on YouTube called Charlie Rose Interview with Klaus Schwab. Now, not pushing Charlie Rose at all. It's just this was a great interview in which Klaus Schwab um, talks about his great reset. So you can watch that if you are more interested because I cannot go in depth here on this video. Someone called Dr. Tenpenny wrote a uh, book called Quantum Entanglement and it talks about the messenger. It really is. It, um, one of the biggest thing in this research is their goal is to shut off what's called the God gene. Now, do we have a gene in our body that connects us to God? No, okay? God is spirit. He's not physically, it's not our genes that connect us. But these people believe that we are physical bodies and everything about us, down to our genes and our chromosomes, um, give us the, the belief in God. So it's physical, but it's not, okay? So something they have in common is the God gene. Why do humans believe in God and animals don't believe in God? That's a question that you should ask. Do plants believe in God? <laughs> it must be some gene that evolved along the way. I'm speaking as someone who doesn't believe in God, but yet believes in evolution. So they're trying to figure out why do people believe in God? Where did this God concept come from? So they're thinking that it's some kind of junk DNA that, you know, added onto the human genome eons ago that evolved along the way. This is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is not a truth. Okay, it's a yes. People hypothesize all the time, and there's some pretty wacky ones along the way. Okay, this hypothesis states that human spirituality is influenced by heredity. Really? So atheists can have believer offsprings? Yes, they can. Believers can have children that are not that are atheists. So that's that goes out the window. There's a hypothesis. Man was created with free will. So if you want to get into some science, I won't get into it too much, but there is a specific gene, gene, gene called VMAT2, vesicular monamine transporter 2, which predisposes humans towards spiritual or mystical experiences, and that's from Wikipedia. In 2004, there's a book called The God Gene by Dean Hammer. How faith is hardwired into our genes. Okay, now... Did this scientist actually pull out a gene, and inside the gene it says, yes, God. No, it doesn't. This is all guesswork. Okay? He says this is an evolutionary advantage to help us get through difficulties, decrease our stress, prevent disease, disease and extend our lives. That's what this gene does, and that's what these people believe that, oh, it's okay, people can believe in God because it's good for them. You know, it helps them get through hard times. Well, it's a lot more than that. You don't believe it? Don't believe me? 
Many scientists, globalists, transhumanists, Luciferians, New Agers, etc., all feel that we need to eliminate or turn off this God gene so humans can evolve to the next level. So if you've lived under a rock, you probably don't know that all Hollywood movies and media and music and just everything all surrounding us is, is believing that we're evolving to a next level. Human beings are getting better every day, but we're really not. We're winding down. Our DNA is winding down. There's more sickness. There's more disease. We don't live as long as, as people used to, and that's the truth. There's a great urgency to move humans to the next level. It's like we need to evolve or die. We have the technology today to attempt this, which is scary stuff. So, uh, as an example, okay, because I'm talking in generalities now, right now, let's look at Barbara Marks Hubbard, a sweet little old lady, New Ager, famous. She died a few years ago. She was very, very big in the 1990s with Oprah, loved her. And um, she says this, she says, this is scary, quarter of humanity must be eliminated from the social body. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects and we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse death. Oh, so I see Barbara has read Revelation and, and seen the verse about the pale horse named death. <laughs> Except she, she equates that to us. We're the ones who have to kill people off. So it becomes the human beings. It becomes our responsibility to help push evolution over this one more hump, one more uh, thing we need to jump, leap over so we can get to the next level. And you can see this. Also, a little bit more disturbing, Barbara Marks Hubbard says this, we'll use whatever means we must to make this act of destruction as quick and painless as possible to the one half of the world who are incapable of evolving. Hmm, let me guess, those incapable of evolving are those pesky born-again Christians, <laughs> right? The selection process will be quick. She's such a nice old lady. Her spirit guide, or her inner voice, which identifies themselves, itself, as Christ, told her all this. So who's really telling her? Really? Demons posing as Christ? Once again, these New Agers and all these people get their information from spirit guides, also known as doctrine of demons that the Bible talks about. More on this in part two, because we're going to examine the scriptures. So, um... You know, the E.T. connection, Satan masquerading as an angel of light. We'll get that in part two. Scripture says to test the spirits to see whether they're from God in 1 John 4, 1. We wouldn't need that kind of warning if it couldn't and wouldn't happen. Remember that. So getting back to the God gene, the urgency to rid humanity of it is increasing. You hear it in Barbara Mark Hubbard's quotes, and it's pure evil, that a sweet old woman can say this with a straight face, even a smile on her face, saying, oh, it's going to be painless, like we're going to get a quarter of the world's population down. Yikes. Look at scientists. Um, this is a way they are, want to get rid of this gene. It's called the Fun Vax Sensor. Project. Now, fun, not as we, this is fun, but as fundamentalist, okay? This is from a Pentagon briefing. This is a leaked video. It's kind of low quality, but let's listen to how sciencey it is and urgent. I'm going to play it for you. And you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, so what, what you're what suggesting you see? here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from donning on a bomb vest and going into a market and blowing up the market. So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene and that by vaccinating them against this, we'll eliminate this behavior. Wow. So killing the God gene with a respiratory virus Sensor. and vaccines, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Okay, so fast forward a few years ahead of when this video was made, 2020, I can't feel God. My soul is dead after she received the vet. So, uh, the second time around that I got it, I got what I was calling um, Beside the mild congestion, my brain just was like, I just felt foggy and I couldn't recall things and I just felt, you know what it was? I felt like a black and white movie. I felt plain. 
Like I had no motivation to do anything, no joy, happiness. It was just, I felt so dull. So anyway, God can override. God overrode my COVID brain. He protected my um, family members too who had to get and he resides his holy spirit in our spirits not in our brains <laughs> so nothing to fear if you're saved okay guys so anyway revelation 18 23 speaks about um that the, the nations were deceived by sorceries and the word sorcery pharmakia think of pharmacy is about drugs by thy sorceries all were all nations deceived drugs where i go there's cannabis in my, where I live in New England, Massachusetts, um, mushrooms, LSD, drugs, increased respiratory medications, anti-anxiety medications. Most everybody that you know is on some kind of medication. Well, they're going to continue and they're going to play a big part in the future. So, gateway to the spirit world. Drugs. Back in the 1960s, the Beatles used drugs and they... <laughs> Where do you think Yellow Submarine came from, right? That was some drug trip. But they used drugs to help them get to a higher plane in your mind. You can kind of connect to the spirit world. So what happened after a while, they didn't want to take the drugs, so they went to the Maharishi Yogi guy, and they used meditation and Eastern mysticism. And you can see that very much today, increasing with all the yoga. And that can bring your mind after meditation, in contact with spirits, which is what the Bible warns about. So there's a spirit world and it's real. Think about, think about things. Think about the pressure. God gene, supposed God gene. Check this out. This is something that I came across years ago because um, down the street from me is a counseling center. And um, they started this thing called Neurostar for transcranial magnetic stimulation. And here's what it is, basically. It's a magnet similar to an MRI used to stimulate nerve cells in the area of the brain thought to control mood. Thought to control mood. These magnetic pulses may have a positive effect on the brain's neurotransmitter levels. So, I found this office just a few weeks ago. I happened to be in a counseling office for um, different reasons. And there on the table was a, a, here's a screenshot of what I took. I couldn't believe it. It's time for a new you. Look at the marketing used for this um, transmagnetic stimulation. Looks like it's great stuff, right? And I'll tell you, uh, scientifically speaking, it is an improvement over the old electrotherapy that they used to use on depressed patients. Back when I was in nursing school, we went through our uh, psych nurse rotation, which I hated, okay? Just telling you, I hate it every minute. And I was assigned to a, a patient who lost her husband. She was depressed, had a hard time getting out of bed and whatnot. And they use ECT. So basically, they strapped her down to a table and they induced a seizure. They had her biting down on this thing and they put a whole full body seizure and they believe with ele electronics, um, like a shock. And she went through a full body seizure and they are thinking that that can reset your brain. Um, I didn't stick around long enough to see if it worked for her or not, I don't know. But it was almost barbaric to have somebody go through that because they had a lot of side effects. Um, but this supposedly is like the new, the new thing. Um, it's used to treat depression. There is a doctor, Dr. Kaisi Aizuma. She is the department psychologist of University of York and her colleagues tested TMS on different brain regions the part of the brain for detecting and solving problems, and they found that 33% of the subjects in the study had a decreased belief in God. Interesting, right? Now, here's something if you want to continue this investigation. The Berean Call, November 11, 2015, has a great article. Go to thebereancall.org and look it up. Changing your belief with magnets and magnetism. Magnets do have an effect on your body. Your red blood cells have iron in them, and they are attracted to magnetism. So there is magne magne magnetic therapies um, for different various reasons. Some work, some don't, some's quackery. I don't even know. But this, with your brain, it's like, don't mess around with your brain. You don't know what's going on inside. Scientists don't even know what, com you know, what, what a thought is. They can't even... I don't know. So anyway... Um, We've only touched on some medical, technological, sorcery, and drugs, which used to be forbidden territory years ago. But now, you know how people say, I did this and God didn't strike me down with lightning. Well, that's not how it works. Everyone's going to stand before God, 
and they're going to give an account by themselves, just them and God. So I hope you learn a little bit of something here for um, Human 2.0, and we're going to get into it a little bit more on part two, because I didn't want to take too long with these parts, and I'll catch you next time. Part two. Bye-bye.